Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Looked and Busy. So today I have decided to do a 24 hour readathon because I do have to be up pretty late tonight and I've wanted to do one of these for a minute and everything just seemed to be like the perfect time. So recently I decided that I wanted to get more into sci-fi and what better way to start than with the classics. So for this reading vlog I will be reading short books because I do struggle to finish those in like a timely manner. I can read a really long book in a day but it might take me two or three weeks to finish a short book. So I have three short classic sci-fi books and when I say classic these are like the top tier of sci-fi at least from my research so i'm super excited to share this experience with you guys if you're interested in seeing what i'll be reading keep on watching okay so i picked out three books and they're all under 300 pages i did not realize they were all under 300 when i picked them up they just happen to be shorter so the first thing i'll be reading is 2001 a Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. This is the novelization or like the screenplay that the movie was based off. I have not seen the movie but apparently this like revolutionized sci-fi um, film and all that stuff and I know that like now a sci-fi award is called the Arthur C. Clarke and he's you know said to be one of the most prolific and um, well regarded sci-fi writers of all time so I'm super excited to read this. The synopsis for this one says Written when landing on the moon was still a dream, made into one of the most influential films of all time, brilliant, compulsive, prophetic, 2001 A Space Odyssey tackles the enduring theme of man's place in the universe. On the moon, an enigma is uncovered. So great are the implications that for the first time, men are sent out into the deep solar system. But before they can reach their destination, things begin to go wrong. Horribly wrong. That's all we got for that one. The second one I'll be reading is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. I've heard really great things about Isaac Asimov from the Robot series, the Foundation series, and I think a, uh, another one that I saw, but I liked the cover this one the best, so I went with this one. And this says, the Foundation series is Isaac Asimov's iconic masterpiece. Unfolding against the backdrop of a crumbling galactic empire, the story of Harry Seldon's two foundations is a lasting testament to an extraordinary imagination, one whose unprecedented scale shaped science fiction as we know it today. The galactic empire has prospered for 12,000 years. Nobody selects Nobody suspects that the heart of the thriving empire is rotting, and psycho historian Harry Seldon uses his new science to foresee its terrible fate. Exiled to the desolate planet Termir Terminus, Seldon establishes a colony of the greatest minds in the empire, a foundation which holds the key to change the fate of the galaxy. However, the death throes of the empire breed hostile new enemies, and the young foundation's fate will be threatened first. That sounds exciting. And the last, but certainly not the least, is Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein, a sci-fi classic. And this is a Hugo Award winner. Um, these are all award-winning sci-fi books. This says, 5,000 years in the future, humanity faces total extinction. Our one defense, highly trained soldiers who scour the metal-strewn blackness of space to hunt down a terrifying enemy on insect life form they call bugs. This is the story of trooper Johnny Rico from his idol idealistic enlistment in the infantry of the future through his rigorous training to the command of his own platoon. And his destiny is a war that will span the galaxy. So here is my TBR for this here readathon. And honestly, because this is under a thousand pages, these are really under 900 pages, I think that I will be able to finish these easily within 24 hours and that I won't have to stay up all night. So I do plan to sleep during this time. Uh, I'm going to start with Arthur C. Clarke. I don't know which of these I'm going to go with next, but I know I'm going to start with this one. And I'm excited. I have a job interview at like 2 in the morning. It's like right after midnight now. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's why we're doing this. But it is 12.05. My first reading sprint is going to start. So I will see you guys in a bit.
okay so quick update before i go to sleep i read the forward in the first 50 pages of 2001 a space odyssey and i'm really really liking it i'm honestly surprised because i thought that because i don't read sci-fi and because it was written so long ago i really would have a hard time getting into it and like struggling but i was flying through it um I was really intrigued i was really enjoying the writing the story like part one was like back in the neanderthal days and the transitioning from like men to, from beast to men and how showing us how even back then aliens were moving the needle forward and now we just moved past the ice age and we're going to like the the, the future where people are colonizing the planets and like living on the moon things like that I'm on page 50. It's like 3 in the morning, though, so I finished my job interview, um, all of that. So now I'm probably going to go to sleep. I might read a little more, but I'm probably going to go to sleep. But uh, according to good reason, I'm like 16% into it, really enjoying it. I usually wake up around 7, so I don't feel like I'll sleep too long, but I'm going to sleep for sure. But yeah, I just want to update you guys that I'm really, really, really enjoying 2001 a space odyssey and if i can find the movie online definitely we'll try and check it out so good night good morning vlog <clears throat> i just got up and ran downstairs to pick up my breakfast so yes i am wearing the same shirt from last night it is 11 20 i have slept um so we're gonna do breakfast get ready for the day get ready for the day and get some more reading done I'm gonna show you. I haven't showed y'all food in a minute. So I have a passion fruit and mango smoothie and it has apple juice, it's very good. And then I got a bacon, egg and cheese biscuit. This is like my favorite breakfast place. And they bake the bacon and onions and all that into the egg. Let me show you. And they top it with cheese. Mm. So it's very good. And I'm about to um, spread some strawberry jam on top of that. So it's 11.20, I think. <clears throat> I'm going to eat breakfast, shower, change, and then reading sprints will start at 12. So we still have 12 hours of quality reading time. So I'm confident that we will make significant progress in our books. I'm going to go on Twitter and say the next reading sprint is at o'clock. And yeah, I will check in with you guys when we're back to reading. Hello, friends. Today is Thursday. Um, don't ask me <clears throat> what happened to my 24-hour reading vlog. 24-hour reading vlog? I don't know. I am still halfway through this. Not even halfway. I'm on page 117. So, um, I'm going to still read it, obviously. And I'm still going to try to read the other two. And we will just vlog this however long it takes me to get through these three books. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not in a reading slump. I'm kind of. I'm just having a hard time focusing on books and having a hard time finishing books. Uh, I really, really struggle with short books. I don't know what it is. Doesn't make sense, but I really have a hard time getting through very short books. So today's Thursday, the 18th. Tomorrow is Juneteenth. Um, and I wanted to vlog Juneteenth and read black books, black queer books, but I don't want to like put down books I'm already in progress. I have already in progress and then pick up more books to probably not read. So, I'll come back when I have enough days. Okay, so I'm reading in between classes and I'm on like a 20 minute break and I made it to page 154. So I'm over 50% into it and something crazy just happened. So. I'm on part four, I think, and each part has been like a different group of characters, a different story, basically. So the first part were like the Neanderthals when we were still uh, evolving from ape to man. It was in that like transitionary period, pre-ice age. And then the second part was 
this astrophysicist who was he's like a uh administrator he was going to space uh to the moon because they had found an obelisk of some sort that ended up being like some alien material and they were just sorry they were disguising it as a pandemic which is why they had like a, a signal block out so he went to go explore that and then in the next part we uh, this is the second time we've gotten to this part now in the next part we have this uh space crew who are going out to saturn um it's the discovery so they're first going to jupiter and they're using jupiter's gravitational pull to like propel them to saturn without having to use like any extra fuel and then they the spaceship is going to orbit become a moon essentially a saturn and orbit it and then another spaceship is gonna like pick them up in like four years but now uh let me not spoil spoil it okay so now we get in there's there's this artificial intelligence that runs the ship and so three of the people on the ship have been put into like a deep sleep stasis until they arrive because they don't need to be there and then when they get there after the 10 month journey they are fresh and ready to go and so two of the guys have been kept awake and then once they get to the ship once they get to saturn they were going to be asleep for the four or five year journey back so um they know part of the mission everyone knows they're part of the mission but then also the ai his name is hal uh the ai that's on board the ship he knows he has his own mission as well this is giving me dan brown origin vibes obviously that came years later but I don't have that much experience with AI. So the AI is starting to like act up. He's starting to behave differently than he usually behaves. And um, the ground control noticed it. The people on the ship noticed it, but obviously they're hundreds of millions of miles away. So only so much can be done. Well, something happens and something happens. And I think the AI is at fault. And I think that they think the AI is at fault as well. And that maybe something is going on with the AI. So I'm on page 154. I've got literally 100 pages left to go. Things are getting spicy. Listen, I'm on page 180. Things have gotten crazy. The truth is starting to come out. Things are starting to be connected. Dots are being connected. I'm on part five, the moons of Saturn. Okay, so I'm on page 210. So I have this much left to go and we've gotten to the point where we're like back in the aliens perspective and they talk about how they have become the farmers of space and they found that nothing to be more um, fertile than the mind. So they encourage intelligence and intelligent thought all over the galaxy and you know they uh, cultivate it and they sow it and then sometimes they have to weed it out. They say um Nothing more precious in the mind. They encouraged is dawning everywhere. They became farmers in the fields of stars. They sowed and sometimes they reaped. 
and sometimes dispassionately they had to weed. The great dinosaurs had long since perished when the survey ship entered the solar system after a voyage that had already lasted a thousand years. It swept past the frozen outer planets, paused briefly above the dying deserts of Mars, and presently looked down on Earth. Spread out beneath them, the explorers saw a world swimming with life. For years they studied, collected, and cataloged. When they had learned all they could, they began to modify. They tinkered with the destiny of many species, on land and in the ocean. But which of their experiments would succeed, they could not know for at least a million years. They were patient, but they were not yet immortal. There was so much to do in this universe of a hundred billion suns, and other worlds were calling. So they set out once more into the abyss, knowing that they would never come this way again. Nor was there any need. The servants they had left behind would do the rest. On Earth, the glaciers came and went, while above them the changeless moon still carried its secret. With the yet slower rhythm than the polar ice, the tides of civilization ebbed and flowed across the galaxy. Strong and beautiful and terrible empires rose and fell and passed on their knowledge to their successors. Earth was not forgotten, but another visit was served little purpose. It was one of a million silent worlds, few of which would ever speak. And now, out among the stars, evolution was driving towards new goal. The first explorers of Earth had long since come to the limits of flesh and blood as soon as their machines were better than their bodies. It was time to move. First their brain and then their thoughts alone. They transferred into shining new homes of metal and plastic. In these they roamed among the stars. They no longer built spaceships. They were spaceships. But the age of the machine entity swiftly passed. In their ceaseless experimenting they had learned to store knowledge in the structure of space itself and to preserve their thought for eternity in frozen lattices of light. They could become creatures of radiation, free at last from the tyranny of matter. Into pure energy, therefore, they presently transformed themselves, and on a thousand worlds, the empty shells they had discarded twitched for a while, and the mindless dance of death then crumbled into rust. Now they were lords of the galaxy and beyond the reach of time. They could rove at will among the stars and sink like a subtle mist through the very interstices of space. But despite their godlike powers, they had not wholly forgotten their origin in the warm slime of vanished sea, and they still watched over the experiments their ancestors had started so long ago. That was two pages, this and this. Like, first of all, can we talk about the writing? The writing is beautiful. For this to have been written in 1964-ish, I would not expect the writing to be so lush and so lyrical. And for this to be sci-fi, like, it's very sciencey. I've gotten some sciencey stuff, but it hasn't been more than what I could handle. Like, I'm honestly surprised at how accessible this is, being that it's over 50 years old, being that it's sci-fi and I don't have any experience with sci-fi. But the writing, though, the writing, I just cannot. So, I, um... Have 40 pages left. We're about to see what the aliens hitting on, and I will be back when I'm done. Okay, I'm greasy, but ignore that. I finished a book. Finally, took me two for whole days to read 250 pages, but it's done. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it like three stars, which for me, for this particular book, this is really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was surprising the places that it went. Uh, some of it, I obviously just don't understand. But I enjoyed it. The writing was beautiful. The story was really good. I don't think it's something I'm supposed to fully conceptualize because it was supposed to be futuristic and, you know, alien-like and like a, dis a different concept of alien than what we see in more modern science fiction. But I really enjoyed this. I'm not sure if I'm going to end this vlog here, even though I only read one book. I don't think I will. I probably will um, try and read either Foundation or Starship Trooper Star, one of those, but I did want to check in and let you know that I did finish 2001 in Space Odyssey and I gave it three stars. So I'm gonna take my makeup off and get ready for bed. And if I have any updates tomorrow, I will let you know.